Hi everyone, I'm Ava. I'm an American living here in the Netherlands and today I wanted to share with you some of the darnest things the Dutch say. For those of you who don't know, I'm just gonna put it out there. I am a big fan of the Dutch language and today I'm sharing some things that have amused me to no end. I'm going to be sharing phrases and idioms that when you translate into English or when you think about them in English, kind of make no sense or are extremely jarring. Like you can translate it and then they don't sound too good. So hope you enjoy. And of course, if I leave anything out in my list, feel free to comment down below. So when it comes to Dutch words or phrases, the ones I'm going to tell you about, I have heard around me a lot. So let's start with number one. This one I heard when I didn't speak a word of Dutch and I didn't know what this word meant. So it was pretty jarring for me to hear it just being spoken and being used in everyday speech. And that word, my friends, is whore. And I feel so uncomfortable saying this because it is not a word I use in English. But in Dutch, it is just a normal word that people say with a smile on their face or a little bit dismissively. The word whore in the Dutch language should have gotten my list of eight words that are difficult to translate into English from Dutch, but it was not on that list. And turns out this one's a bit difficult to translate as well. The context that you will tend to hear the word whore in, oh my God, it doesn't get easier. I'm saying it and saying it and I hope it gets easier. It just doesn't. The first time I heard the word whore spoken in the Netherlands was actually at Schiphol airport where I was with my girlfriend and we were trying to check in a bag or who cares what we were doing? We were trying to do something. And then the flight attendant the, who worked on the ground, she was standing there at the desk and she was just like, yeah, or we could do this for you or something to that effect. And I just remember being totally shocked because I was like, this is a customer. Why are you using that word? This doesn't make any sense. And of course I knew at the time, especially since I'm a linguist, that of course that word probably does not mean what it means in English. But how am I supposed to guess what it means? Like I said, it's difficult to translate. Here are my best guesses as to what the word whore means in various contexts. So if someone says, yeah, whore, that means they're saying yes, of course, with that intonation. If someone says, nay, whore, that means, oh no, it's not necessary. Or if someone says, nay, whore, means no, of course not. I hope that's helpful. If you are not Dutch, uh, brace yourself because this is a tricky one. And also one of those words that now that I kind of know what it means in certain contexts, I still don't feel comfortable using. I don't know why it makes no sense at all because it's just, it's just a word in Dutch, but I can't say it without giggling like a child or feeling really uncomfortable to be honest. Anyway, moving on to the next one that's even worse. And that is Miedenoker. And Miedenoker directly translated into English, like literally translated, is ant screwer, effer, ant fucker. That's what it means. But if you have to translate Miedenoker more correctly, it means someone who's really picky about details, who's like fussing over details. And I tried to think about how this word Miedenoker ant effer developed in the language. That is one uh, interesting word. Another one of those words I don't feel comfortable using because although I've heard that it's a sort of normal word to be using about people who are fussy over details, I'm just not comfortable doing that. I just feel like I'm going to use these words in Dutch incorrectly and then it's going to be like shame upon me. I know that's not the case and this is on me. Also, someone who screws ants, like ants are tiny. I mean, I guess that's the point, but why? That also sounds painful. The third phrase I want to share with you on this list is tweede leg. And tweede leg means your second lay. <laughs> when I heard this, I really could not stop laughing. I'm still laughing because I think this is so creative, kind of accurate, pretty funny. Is it a little offensive? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. But the second lay of a person is when someone remarries and then they have children again. It's like, you know, they had their first batch of kids and now they're gonna go have their second batch of kids. This happens quite a lot, so it's an interesting phrase. The next phrase on my list for today is extremely adorable and it is an eselsbruggetje, a little donkey bridge, if I were to literally translate it. If I were to translate it more accurately, it is a mnemonic in English. Little donkey bridge and 
mnemonic or ASOS bruggetje and mnemonic sound nothing alike. This is when I think Dutch and English are pretty similar to each other, but how am I supposed to know what a little donkey bridge in Dutch means, even if I could pick apart the words? Anyway, a mnemonic or an ASOS bruggetje is a way of remembering something. So it's a little donkey's bridge of memory. Sort of. Something like that. What's funny is that I've heard the word Eselsbruggetje being used in Dutch all the time, whereas the word mnemonic in English is kind of fancy, I would say. Like, it's a, it's a word that you wouldn't expect teenagers to necessarily know. They would learn as teenagers. But I've heard Eselsbruggetje be used all the time. Next on this list, number whatever, who's keeping count, is Appenstaartje. And Appenstaartje is the at symbol that you use in your emails, that you have on your keyboard. That is such a cute word because in English it means a, a ape's tail, monkey's tail, and yeah, the at symbol kind of does look like it. This is one of those cases where I think the Dutch have done one better because English, at symbol. Dutch people, monkey's tail. Good one. I'm amused and impressed. The next one on this list is cute both in Dutch and English. In English, it is a ladybug. And in Dutch, it is a lieve herspeesje, which translated is a small, sweet lord's creature. That's so cute and um, really interesting. Like, what? But also ladybug, what? <laughs> like, I can't, I can't even. And also, they're both really quirky and Again, I, besides the like bug and creature part, they have nothing to do with the animal or with each other. So confusion all around, but cuteness all around as well, more importantly. Seriously, you folks, a large number of my friends are linguists, so I don't understand why we haven't just had all of these conversations about these weird things in Dutch. No, not weird, these amusing things in Dutch for English speakers. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get on that because <laughs> this is amazing. Making this list was a lot of fun. Now, for those of you who saw my video last week, you might've heard me talk about cobblestone streets and someone actually commented the Dutch word for cobblestone and that is kinderkopjes. Um, children's heads. I thought it was adorable the first time I heard it. I was like, yes, I could totally see how they're little kids' heads. And then I thought about how creepy and scary that was. Yay, because every time I walk on them now, I'm like, oh my God, I'm walking on little kids' heads. And who thought, no, no, just, ah. So yeah, it went from like super adorable, I love this, to I'm not sure if I'm allowed to like this, but I'm amused nonetheless. Okay, folks, we have reached the much awaited idiom portion of this video. Now, my knowledge of Dutch idioms is so-so. So actually while making this video, I thought what a great opportunity to learn more Dutch idioms. So some of these idioms I had heard before or read about and others I came across like a couple of days ago. They're interesting. You're in for a treat. The first idiom I want to share with you today is met zijn of haar neus in de boter vallen. To fall with one's nose in the butter. And you know, this is one of those moments where I thought I could probably take Dutch idioms and translate them into English and then kind of see if they match up to any English idioms. Fail. Absolutely not something you could do because in English, nothing comes close to this. Also, what does this even mean to fall with your nose in the butter? I tried to guess what it could possibly mean and I ended up with, oh, maybe you got yourself into something you didn't expect to. I don't know why I thought that. But turns out it's when something extremely positive or something good happens to you. So falling with your nose in the butter is a good thing, my friends. Also, if air an angeltje over your tongue feast. Uh, <laughs> as if an angel is peeing on your tongue. What do you think that means? So of course, I had no idea. But it means that you're really enjoying the food that you're eating. The English translation, of course, does not make any sense. It is an idiom, but Okay, think about it this way. You're eating something and what you say in these contexts, if you really enjoy the food, is as if an angel is taking a piss on your tongue. Interesting language thing. I noticed that when I first started speaking Dutch, I tried to say, oh, ich ha pisse, and people would laugh because I <laughs> took the word piss from English and thought that would translate into Dutch. It doesn't. Um, you would probably want to say plasse if you're trying to go pee. 
but in this idiom, I noticed that it says feast instead of flust. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I don't know what it's like if an angel were to take a piss on my tongue, but I can imagine it's not the worst. While putting together this list, I noticed that some of the idioms on there were so freaking Dutch. I mean, you already see the quirkiness of the Dutch show up in all the things that I'm talking about in this video and all the things that I talk about in all of my videos, but some of these idioms are just so Dutch, like op die feet, on that bicycle. It doesn't just mean on that bicycle, it means, oh, that's what you meant, or oh, in that way. So if you are trying to explain what you meant to someone and then they get it and have that epiphany moment, they say, oh, op die feet. If bicycle idioms aren't Dutch, then what is? If I were to come up with something similar for Americans, what would it be? Oh, at that McDonald's. No, I guess it doesn't work. What about at that Starbucks? Still doesn't work. Als je je billen brandt, moet je op de bladen zitten. If you burn your butt, you've got to sit on the blisters. I'll give you a moment to think about that one. This is one interesting way of saying that if you do something, then those actions have consequences. In English, we have something similar, which is if you make your bed, then you must lie in it. But that sounds a little tame, like, you know, bed maybe it means something like grave and then you lie in your grave. Okay, okay. It's very vague and euphemistic. <laughs> the Dutch are very clear. You burn your butt, gotta sit on the blisters. Dutch directness shows up in idioms as well. So this next one I came across when looking up idioms and putting together words for this video, and that is held op sokke. A uh, hero on socks, or in socks rather. And this one, you would think it just means a hero in socks, like Superman is a hero in underwear. Though you hope they're all wearing underwear given the clothes they're wearing, so tight. But a held op sokke apparently means like you put on a brave face, but you're really quite the frady pants. Interesting, right? You know what else is really Dutch? Clogs. Not that people necessarily go around wearing them anymore, but they're still very Dutch. So an idiom with clogs is a very Dutch idiom. Like, dat kan je op je klompe aanvoelen. Literal translation, you can feel that on your clogs. Actual translation or the meaning of this idiom is that you could have seen it coming. Why would you feel it on your clogs if you could have seen it coming? I'm not sure. Or why would you even be able to feel it on your clogs if you could see it coming? I have no guesses. I have no idea. So if you know, let me know. Okay, okay, another thing that's really Dutch that I love, one of my favorite things about the Netherlands is the cheese. And I have a cheese idiom for you. And that is, ergens geen kaas van hebben gegeten. And that means to not have eaten cheese from somewhere. The literal translation that is. The meaning is something like to be unfamiliar with the topic or unfamiliar with something. So <laughs> to gain familiarity, you would want to have eaten the cheese from a place. I have to say, I agree with that one. Absolutely. Yes, 100% correct. For speck and bone may do to join for bacon and beans. I feel like the alliteration is better in English because bacons and beans both start with a nice little buh. So this means that you're participating in something not to win a lot from it uh, or you're not expecting big wins from it and you're not necessarily expecting a loss either. Um, you're doing it for fun or for the heck of it. Okay, but why bacon and beans? Why not like cheese and paper nota? Maybe because the stakes are then actually quite high. And the last one I have for you today is the hond in the pot vinden, which literally translated to English means to find the dog in the pot or pan, I guess. And you could have this image in front of you, right? Like this dog in this pot. And it means that you've come too late for dinner or like the food is gone. And I feel like I totally see the connection. Dog is now licking the pan clean. I have to say that that is a very clear idiom. Spot on. So those were some amusing Dutch words, phrases, and idioms that I wanted to share with you today. Of course, if I got something wrong or I left something out, let me know in the comments down below. 